Hello everyone, welcome back to Workplace Wizards. Uh, we are a restaurant consulting company. We deal with restaurant forms, checklists, and spreadsheets, but we do have other services. Uh, if you want to know what they are, just go ahead to my website. That would be www.workplacewizards.com. We'll bring you to this website. Uh, you can hit restaurant services. It gives you a little bit of information on uh, what services we offer to restaurants. Uh, you don't have to click on it. Um, let's go back. What you're going to do, you just highlight it and then just go down and look for what you're looking for. All right, but we're going to be on the home page right now. And uh, if you click down a little bit, uh, these are restaurant forms and checklists. This is the forms page, which you got right here. This gives you every single form and spreadsheet that we have in the system, but I made it a little bit easier for you. Go to the home page, and if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see it broken down in categories. Uh, this one here is every single uh, rest, restaurant form checklist spreadsheet that we have available. And then down below, I broke them down to restaurant forms for managers, uh, kitchen, uh, to read the cash control, front of the house forms, restaurant employment, labor forms, and cleaning forms and checklists etc. Now if you have a specific request or need, meaning that you need a customized form, just reach me at workplacewizards at gmail.com or call me at 800-753-0657 and uh, we'll discuss further needs for your restaurant. Alright, so let's go, go right to the spreadsheet itself. Uh, this is the new spreadsheet called Food Inventory Labor Management System Films. Uh, this is going to be part six. Uh, the previous parts are the film introduction, calendar, phone list, which includes business, employee, and phone manager list. You've got your uh, vendor daily sales sheets. Um, and now we're talking about the inventory and food cost section. So that's part six. Let's go to your uh, uh, food inventory instructions. Uh, before you even start the system, definitely read this and understand it because it tells you how to work the system, but it also gives you a little bit of insight on uh, food costs. Also, uh, how to create and save films from month to month, uh, which is here, and how to create a folder on your desktop. So as you're doing your months, you can save your months into that folder as well. So it'll tell you how to do it here. All right, so let's go back to your printout sheet. Now, uh, the white section here is strictly for input, and as you can see, it made it easier, walk-in freezer, prep kitchen, etc. The dark section is an area where it populates from your week one food inventory. This section right here has got formulas in it, it's protected, it's the dark shaded area. Up here is going to be your, uh, your, data, your date, uh, that's the only one that you guys have to manually put your date because this sheet is a multi-sheet. It works for week one, two, three, four, five. So once you print it, put the date, put the week. Once you do your inventory, you input your information, don't throw the sheet away. Put it on a start file in your, your manager's office and leave it there for future reference. Okay, so your key sheet is going to be your week one food inventory. You're going to have to go to your top and you're going to unprotect your page. Right now it is unprotected, but this is what it looks like. So you protect it here, but then when you want to unprotect it, hit unprotect. And then what you do is you're going to come over here, you're going to get an invoice from the food purveyor, and you're going to go ahead and start uh, putting in all your information. Now these sheets are category, meaning they're broken down. Produce, meat inventory, poultry, chicken, what it is, seafood, uh, vegetables, uh, french fries, other, tater tots it could be, it could be uh, onion rings, uh, potato skins. Okay, so you got your appetizers, you got your dairy. Your egg inventory, your bakery inventory, your dry storage inventory, uh, candy inventory, dry, uh, drink inventory, uh, which is sodas, coffee, teas, etc. Now, it's how you set the system up. Get a hold of your food provider. Tell them that you want to filter your, your invoice into categories. They have the capability of doing it. Tell them that's how you want it. All right, so uh, you set the system up by putting your product code in, uh, your product name pack size and your price. Cucumbers is by the case. Alright, if you want to count it by each, just put the same information, put each, 
and then do the math and figure out how much it's going to cost for each cucumber. So that way, when you're in your walk-in and you got 1.5 case, it's going to be 1.5 at 2250. If you have an each, you put one, it's going to figure out the each and put the each cost down here based on how much you enter. When you do your counts, just remember it's the 1.5, 1 1.4, 1 0.9 uh, measuring. If you have uh, just about a full case, but not quite, it'll be a 0.9. If it's a uh, uh, 0.5, it needs a case and a half. If it's just a half a case, 0.5. Quarter of a case, 0.25, etc. You, you guys know that. All right, so uh, as you're filling in the information, doing your inventory, it's going to subtotal here. Uh, it's going to subtotal in each category. Those figures are automatically going to populate to your inventory percentage page, which is here. It's going to automatically populate into here. So, uh, We'll get into this in just a second, but let's just go back to your, your week one food inventory sheet. Now, just so you know, you only have to set the system up once, meaning entering all this information in for every category. Once you do that, this stuff automatically populates to the week two through the week five inventory sheets. Made it simple. It also populates automatically to your food count order sheets. This is where you do your food orders. So you don't have to enter it in twice. It's there for you. So basically, uh, you print out your food count, you do your order, you put it in, it's going to tell you how much to order based on your par figures. All right, so uh, now that we know how to do this, also your food one inventory is also going to put that information here. So it's, it's a very simple system to use. Now, even if you had a POS system, you still have to set it up since so it's the same thing. All right, you got a little bit of valuable food cost information here. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about your uh, percentage page. As I said before, that this percentage page populates from everywhere in the system. It's all protected with the exception of the beginning inventory week one area. And it's actually all protected, but the only input area that you're going to have to worry about is your projected food cost percent and your beginning inventory information. All right, so let's talk about this. If you've never had a system before, you never did inventory, you're not going to have an inventory number. So therefore, you have to print out week one inventory if it falls into week one. If it's not, it's week two. And then uh, you're going to have to take that information and you have to enter it into here. That information is automatically going to be your ending inventory. All right, so if week one, if you do it on a Sunday, uh, before Monday, and you do counts, you're in. If you have any purchases, it'll add it. It'll... Uh, and then you'll have your ending inventory. Uh, your cost of goods will automatically uh, input in there based on the information you enter. Your revenue is coming from here. And this figure is actually coming from your daily sales sheets. It all populates from that area. So once it's said and done, you put your information in. It's going to actually give you an actual food cost percentage. Um, just before you actually set the, when you set the system up and you want to do a projected food cost percentage per item, put those items in. Because let's say, uh, and I'm going to just put this in. I'm not going to ruin the formula. Just doing this as is. Let's say your projected food cost, your actual food cost was uh, uh, 40 percent. Let's pretend. 40 percent, right? And uh, actually, let's go back a little bit further. Let's say you want your percentage to be about 28 percent, and your projected came in at 40. That means that your food cost is too high because you projected 28 and it came in at 40. And let's say that figure was at uh, 27.9. You're in line. All right, as long as it's not too bad, meaning that it's not too under, because if that's the case, then you need to go and recount your figures again. See if you inputted the wrong figure, if you counted the wrong amount. All right, so let me go ahead and click back here, make sure that I got the formula in there. I do. Okay. So, that being said, uh, you understand how the system works. Uh, what goes for food goes for paper. Same thing. If you never had an inventory for paper, then you're going to have to put a figure in once you do your inventory. It's going to automatically give you your ending inventory. There's week one paper, two, three, four, week five paper, and then your month to date figure. Now, also, everybody knows that your ending inventory for week one is automatically going to be your beginning inventory for week two. 
comes from up there. So once you do your ending inventory, uh, if you never had the system, this is where you're actually going to know your figures right here. You're not going to get anything up here because you never did inventory before. But the week two, if that you started on week two, you're going to know your actual food cost percentage. All right. If you have any questions about this, you can definitely reach us at workplacewizards at gmail.com. You can call me at my direct number, 1 800 753 0657. All right. So let's go back real quick and finish this tutorial. Uh, we have the valuable food cost information page. Read it. It has some good information on uh, the food cost formula. It also has how to prevent food cost issues through the following. Uh, food inventory theft, PCI, which is your payment card industry uh, security standards. Uh, what will happen if you install security cameras? Uh, limit access to cash. Oh, it has a lot of good information in there. So uh, if you're a seasoned manager, you know this information. If not, read it. Uh, you got your menu pricing information right here. Uh, we have a menu pricing tool instructions that tells you how to use the tool and then we have the actual tool right here so you can cost out your menu here it gives you the directions on the instructions on how to save each one I gave you an example uh, last update was 512 for this specific uh, thing this is not zucchini I didn't change this this would be a uh, french fries so let's go ahead and change it anyway to get it right Okay, so we got French fries. Uh, you put your portion size in, six ounce portion of fries. It's each. You have a drop down box. You can choose uh, your measuring issue, uh, quantity to be one. Uh, unit cost is 38 cents based on your calculation. Uh, the only thing that goes with French fries is salt. So you got to put the salt in, teaspoon, uh, quarter. You can actually put your, put your one quarter in. Remember, you have a drop down box for a teaspoon, and then you can do the math and figure out your, your how much salt is actually going in there. Unit cost is 19 cents, uh, and it's only going to cost you 13 cents for it. Um, that's based on whatever you're, once you figure it out, it's probably going to be a lot, lot lower. That's probably like two or three cents. All right, so when you scroll down, it's going to tell you what your actual plate cost is. It's gonna, your actual menu cost is what you want to put the item in. So how much are you selling your French fries for? You're going to put them in. It's going to tell you what your gross profit is, 1.38 print. It's going to tell you what your food cost percentage is, 26.92. So let's say uh, uh, food prices went up or whatever. You need to change your prices. So then you're going to come down here, and you're going to put your new food cost uh, percent in. You want, you want to lower it because the lower it means more profit for you. Right, so it's going to raise your price from uh, from 189 to 199. So in this is case, uh, we want the adjusted food cost percent to be at 25.5. My new menu price is going to be 199, and I'm actually going to make a dollar 49 off of it versus a uh, dollar 38. Now that's that's a low figure. Uh, you can bring this down to like maybe a 24 percent, and. Uh, it be actually a little more gross profit. But just remember, price your menu out accordingly. I'll tell you what, if you were to go up here into your food costing uh, tool instruction information, it's going to tell you here on menu pricing, give you a lot of information on how to price out your menu and different ways that you can do it to, to maximize your profit. All right, so let's get out of this. I think we talked about everything we can talk about today on the food inventory. Uh, our next part is going to be part seven, and we're going to be talking about the manager and employee labor. Uh, that's a very long tutorial. I'd say about at least 15 minutes. Um, I can't wait to get to it. So let's go ahead and end today. I really, I'm really glad you joined us today and you learned a lot about the inventory area. Again, if you want to learn some more, visit my web. Uh, page uh, and uh, website, and then you can learn a lot more information from that side as well. All right, you folks have a great day. I look forward to seeing you in the next part. Thank you.